By the end of today's video, I'm going to tell you which one of these next-gen consoles I simply couldn't live without. Hey, what's going on guys? CJR here back with another video. Today, we are taking a look at the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X five to six months later after release. Now, I'm going to start off this video by telling you that I have been playing my Xbox Series X 10 times more than I have with my PlayStation 5. Now, there are a number of factors for, for the reasoning between behind that, um, one of which is simply I have more games on the Series X. I was given a Series X um, by Microsoft Canada to um, unbox and review at the time of release, and along with that came a package of, of software titles. So that's the main reason why I've, I've been putting more time into my Series X. Um, I guess I'll start this off by a comparison of the hardware itself. So uh, one, in terms of looks, one is a kind of sleek, minimalistic, monolithic looking console. And one is this monstrous, um, ugly <laughs> beast of a console. It, it's massive, it really sticks out on my shelf. Um, as you can tell, I'm not a huge fan of the design of the, of the PlayStation 5. Uh, when it comes to functionality, um, I'm a huge fan of the Xbox uh, brand of controller and I think it's been refined to near perfection on the Series X. That being said, I absolutely love the PlayStation 5 controller to, to the point where I think it's probably in my top three controllers of all time. And when it comes to controller, I think it slightly edges out the controller for the Xbox Series X. Now, um, I love the adaptive triggers and I've actually based you know, one or two purchase decisions on games that I bought. I bought um, Call of Duty on the PS5 over the Series X because of those adaptive triggers, which I think are super cool for shooters. Now, that being said, I have had issues with the um, PlayStation 5 controller. Um, now, there's been stick drift issues across the board, but one of the more, which I think is going to become an issue for all PlayStation 5 controllers, um, is the springs within the triggers. I think it's an inevitability that the springs in the triggers, most notably the right um, R2 trigger that you use for firing weapons uh, with, ex with extended play of um, Call of Duty, Fortnite, um, those springs are going to break. I've had one break already. Pretty simple fix for somebody who's... No, it's, not, it's, it's a simple fix for anybody. It's not that hard, but it is something that, you know, it shouldn't be... Um, it, sh it shouldn't be something that's needed. Uh, I think it's an issue because of the adaptive triggers and the um, resistance that it's placing on them, and people are simply pushing through that and snapping the spring. Um, I think that's going to be a major issue on these controllers going forward. But, you know, when it comes to controllers, they're both going to suffer from stick drift, which is a whole nother ball ballgame. Uh, when it comes of, into uh, hardware itself, uh, so far I've got to give a slight edge to the Series X simply because of the storage, storage solutions. Now, at the time of this video, um, there has been an update for the PlayStation 5, but that's only come, you know, several months after uh, the release of the console. Um, are you only now able to use a portable hard drive? to play PS4 games or at least store your PS5 games and transfer them over. Um, that's been awesome. I've been able to keep all of my um, uh, Xbox um, One games on, on the hard drive uh, and just have some expanded storage. I'm using a Samsung T5 solid state drive, so it's pretty quick. Um, you know, I've had issues with both consoles, not recently, um, after updates. In, in the first initial weeks and, you know, two months or so, I'd have instances where the consoles would just simply shut down. And in that case, it was, it was pretty equal across the board. Another issue I've had with the Sony, I have a Sony X900H, flagship TV, um, you know, advertised as the perfect TV to go with the PlayStation 5. I have this persistent issue where when I'm using the... Um, uh, when I'm using the correct setting that allows for 120 frames per second, I don't get any sound um, from the PS5. Not exactly sure if that's actually a PS5 or a TV issue, um, but it's an issue. I have to reset my TV every time I want to use um, the setting that allows for 120 hertz. Um, there's been several issues uh, with the TV itself and, you know, I guess I can't really put that on the PS5, but if you want to play in 120 hertz, it's been a reoccurring issue and it's been super annoying. Um, in terms of, you know, software, uh, 
One is fantastic for backwards compatibility. Obviously that is the Series X. Uh, I'm able to play all of my old, not all, almost all of my old Xbox library. As you know, I have an extensive library of um, Xbox, Xbox 360 games, Xbox One, and it'll pretty much all play on here um, and, and do it quite well. Uh, there's been all sorts of um, work that's been done to go back and, and allow for higher frame rates on titles. Of course, that has happened with the uh, PS5 as well, but it's, it's a clear win in terms of um, backwards compatibility on, on the Series X. Now, um, when it comes to the offerings of, of games, that's, that's what really it comes down to when um, you know, choosing one console over the other. And I think it's a pretty clear win for the PlayStation 5. It simply has better exclusives right now. Now with the acquisition of ZeniMax Media and games like Bethesda and Fallout being possibly being exclusive to uh, the Xbox platform, that may change, but as it stands right now, um, if you're gonna pick a console just over what has the best exclusives, it's most likely gotta be the PS5. I, I think that's safe to say. Now, the clear winner in this entire race for me is essentially Game Pass. Game Pass is one of the uh, best values in, in entertainment today. So with the Xbox series of consoles, you can get um, Xbox Game Pass, which is depending on where you're living in the world, anywhere between 15 and $20 a month. And you get access to hundreds of games. Um, you, act, you get Project X Cloud, uh, whatever they're calling it now, um, where you can actually access games uh, through your Android device. Um, they've, sim they've just rolled out the beta for um, the Chrome extension, Safari, and being able to play games through your iPhone. So you essentially can be anywhere in your house and have games stream to um, now your computer, your laptop, or any mobile device. Um, so you don't even need an Xbox anymore. You can simply just sign up for Game Pass and play games that way, which, which is crazy. Uh, and it works quite well. Uh, they're in, in the beta testing for the um, iPhone side, but I have tested it on... Um, on the Android um, side, and it, it's been a great experience. So, um, you know, for me, that, the idea that I can play all my backwards compatible, um, you know, all the classic Xbox, Xbox 360, Xbox One, I get access to uh, day one um, first party Microsoft games on the day that they're released, they are on Game Pass. Um, MLB The Show, it was really weird seeing a Sony game with the Sony Interactive logo show up on an Xbox console. That's on Game Pass, day one. Um, you know, plenty of third party games, uh, tons of indie games that show up on, on Game Pass day one. Uh, you can essentially buy an Xbox and get Game Pass and be pretty, not have to buy any other games throughout the year. EA, EA games are part of ga uh, Game Pass now. This is turning into a Game Pass commercial, but I really do think it's, it's a phenomenal um, uh, value for, for, for what you're getting. Um, EA games, so if you're into sports games, you don't get them day one, but several months later, like I think NHL 21 was just released into Game Pass. FIFA's coming, I think, any day or a week now. Um, and that's part of Game Pass too. So the amount of games that you get and often games that you get on release date with Game Pass, in my opinion, outweighs the exclusives um, that you might not be getting by, by having a PS5. Now, I totally understand if you're a diehard fan of you know, the God of War series or whatever, you just can't live without those. But when it comes to value for me, um, if I were to only be able to choose one of these consoles, I have no bias here. I, I, I'm able to get, I'm lucky enough to be able to get all the consoles. Um, I'm going with the Series X just because of that value. And like I said, for the few exclusives that I might miss um, on the PS5, that's far outweighed by the sheer number of fantastic titles. Let's not diminish, let's not pretend that the titles that are available on the Series X are not amazing. Um, the top end exclusives, those three or four games um, might be better on the uh, PS5, but in terms of sheer quantity of fantastic games, um, available for that simple monthly fee, Xbox Series X. When it comes to hardware capabilities, they're really like neck and neck. Um, you know, the Xbox has been my lead platform in the past just because I felt like I got a little bit more uh, graphical fidelity, um, a, a little more power out of um, um, like multi-platform uh, games. So I would typically gravitate to uh, playing those on the uh, Series X. But again, that's also determined by 
you know, I just was spending more time because of Game Pass. I was spending more time in the Xbox ecosystem. Um, so that often dictated, well, if I'm already playing this much time on here, I may as well play this game on here. So the short of it is these are two fantastic consoles. Um, but for me, in my opinion, if, I, if you can only choose one, this is the way to go. If you're a fanboy that's one of these people that says, I'm a PlayStation guy, then this video is not for you. I'm not going to be able to persuade you. And vice versa, there's people who call themselves Xbox guys. I'm not into that. I guess you can be, you know, I'm a PlayStation guy first, but I love my Xbox. I get, I get that. Let's try and, um, you know, separate your uh, past biases. Just because you had a PlayStation 1 doesn't mean you need to get every single PlayStation console uh, ever. So uh, we should quickly touch on availability. This definitely factors in. You most likely can't even get a PlayStation 5. So if you're one of those people that's waiting um, and going to be waiting till almost Christmas to grab a PlayStation 5, you must really love those exclusives. Um, you know, if that's a driving force for you not to get into next gen and miss out on the hundreds of other amazing titles that have come, you know, to both platforms simply because, oh, I'm if I get the Xbox, I might not be able to play Ratchet and Clank or or God of War. Um, then I'd, I'd say that you're a unique case for sure. And, and I totally understand that, you know. There's people that are only about the ex, um, Sony exclusives. They don't care about Halo, Gears of War, um, Fallout you might care about. Um, I guess my, my point is that landscape is changing. It's not simply Gears of War, Fallout, and Forza. It's now going to be, you know, Fallout, um, um, Skyrim, um, Doom, um, Wolfenstein, you know, that, that, that list of, of titles exclusives is, is getting far more broad on the Xbox now. So I hope you guys enjoyed this um, rambling. Um, you know, you, you really can't make the wrong choice here. But um, like I said, I just kind of wanted to pinpoint this down to uh, the console that I could uh, not live without. And like I said, for me, it's got to be the Series X. Uh, it's hard to say because I, I do um, love Xbox or PlayStation exclusives. God of War cannot wait for Ratchet and Clank. I think Ratchet and Clank is probably my most uh, anticipated game coming up. But um, removing bias and just looking at pure value uh, for your money, to me, hands down, it's, it's the Series X. So let me know in the comments below your thoughts. I'm sure there's going to be a bunch of PlayStation fanboys and Xbox fanboys down there. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have an attachment um, one way or another to either, to be honest with you. Um, I've owned every single iteration of, of every console. So, um, you know, take that as it is. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your continued support on this channel. Let me know in the comments below uh, which console, if, you're, if you've been able to pick up a PS5 or a Series X, which one you plan on buying. Um, if this video swayed you at all, either way, let me know in the comments below. And uh, thank you for watching. Till the next episode.